to Germany, that's going to Australia, that's going to China, that's going to Chile, that's going to Japan. Wow. That's amazing. It's kind of interesting. Nah, sekarang bahasa drum udah sampai di pabriknya Gretsch, yaitu di Richland, South Carolina. Kira-kira pada penasaran nih gimana pabriknya Gretsch yang sangat terkenal itu, yang legendaris. Dibuat kalian yang penasaran, jangan sampai kedip, tonton terus video sampai habis, tetap juga di channel Bahasa Drum, oke? Okay? Yuk! Nih hey guys, sekarang kita lagi ada di pabriknya Gretsch. Gila, tempatnya nggak begitu besar kayak dia, okay? cuma gila ini salah satu sejarahnya Amerika banget ya, ini di sini. Ini makanya kesempatan besar banget buat bahasa drum, buat bisa apa ya main ke Gretsch dan bisa tour pabrik di sini itu luar biasa banget. Jadi buat kalian jangan kemana-mana, tonton video sampai habis, oke? Okay? So we make uh, we make three different series of drums here. Yep. Make the USA Custom, the Brooklyn, and the Broadcaster, right? All the shells are different, so we'll start off talking about the shells. Okay. Over here is a three ply shell. So the Broadcaster shell is a three ply shell. The outer veneer is maple. The inner veneer is maple. The inside veneer is a big thick piece of poplar. When we were developing this shell, initially uh, there wasn't enough stability in it. Mm -hmm. So we went and put a scarf joint on the inside, which is a little bit unusual for a ply shell these days. Mm -hmm. Most shells have a butt joint. But when we did that, it put just the right amount of stability in there and was a little bit true to the original. Uh, the shell they made back in the 30s and 40s had scarf joints. So uh, we started, we introduced the series in 2014 and it's been very successful. Yeah. And uh, what, what got me into three-ply was I bought a, uh, a 1947 broadcaster on eBay years ago, and the kit was totally demolished. It was in horrible shape. Once I had fixed it, uh, set it up in my living room, and I was playing, and I was just blown away by the sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, it sounded so good that my wife actually was in the other room. Mm -hmm. She came running into the living room going, Oh my God, those drums sound good! Right? And that, I knew, I knew then that it was like, okay, this, we need to go after this. So, so what uh, are you guys trying to make um, the drum with reinforcement ring? Uh, Gretsch traditionally has never yeah. used a reinforcement ring. Uh -huh. It's just not part of what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, it has something to do with the sound. Uh, you know, some people say reinforcement rings will choke a drum. Uh -huh. I don't know if that's true or not. I, I don't have a lot of experience with reinforcement okay. rings. You know. Okay. One good thing or a bad thing is, all the only drums I really know a lot about are Gretsch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know I know a lot about other drums, mm -hmm. but not quite to the same level. Mm -hmm. So you know, we've just traditionally never done reinforcement. Mm -hmm. These are Brooklyn shells. Brooklyn. Okay. Six we one? we came out with the Brooklyn series in 2012, and uh, when when I was working on it, I wanted to have a shell that was very similar to the USA shell, but I wanted it to be different as well. So I took the same basic fly layup that we have in the USA Custom and replaced the gum with uh, poplar, right? So this shell, the outer ply is maple, the next ply is poplar, the next ply is maple, then you have two plies of poplar and a ply of maple. So it's construction-wise, it's very similar to the USA shell, although it's got gum instead of uh, instead of or poplar instead of gum. But uh, when we came out with these in 2012, mm -hmm. within several months, our business here at the factory nearly tripled. Mm -hmm. uh, we, for, traditionally, for years, we'd had a very small staff here, seven or eight people. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 2012, we all of a sudden, we had to have 15 people. Mm -hmm. And it's continued to grow. So right now, we're at 21 people, which, mm -hmm. which is most we've ever had here. Mm -hmm. And we're building more drums than we ever, mm -hmm. ever have ever had. So. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. And over here, this is a... Uh, this is a USA Custom shell. And this shell, uh, Gretsch started using a six-ply shell in the mid-50s. Prior to that, everything was three-ply. And uh, 
that was also when Gretsch decided to outsource their shell making. So they went to a company in Indiana called Jasper, and uh, they developed the USA Custom Shell. And uh, the shell, for years, uh, we really wouldn't talk about what the shell was made of. Uh-huh. It was kind of there was always kind of a mystery around the Jasper shell. Yeah, I know. Right, I, you it know, is. and and uh, anyways, the shell. There's always been confusion in the marketplace about the shell because it's a six ply shell. The outside ply is maple. The inside ply is maple. The other four plies are all gum, right? However, when you look at it, a lot of people mistake that third ply for being maple, not gum. And the reason that is, is the outside ply, the grain is horizontal, yeah. right? Then you have a vertical ply of gum. The next ply is a horizontal ply of gum. So what you're seeing is the cross cut on the gum, uh, right? But, and it's sense. just a slightly different color. Mm-hmm. Then the other two plies are uh, vertical gum, mm-hmm. and then the inside is horizontal maple. But uh, in 55 or whenever they went to that shell, that was really the, the birth of the modern day Gretsch sound. Because yeah. around the same time, they, we started painting silver on the inside. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gretsch started to get I think fairly serious about their edges, at least on the bass drum and the snare drum, mm-hmm. and that's when we started using diecast tubes at the same time. So a combination of all those things was really the birth of the modern day Gretsch sound. And and uh, you know Jasper made our shells up until the early 2000s, then they went out of business. So at that at that at that point, we went to Keller and gave them our proprietary formula, and they started making them. And uh, it took them a little while to do it, and they invested pretty heavily in doing it. They, they had to retool some of their machines. At the time, our shells were uh, a sixteenth of an inch larger than everybody else's, so they had to adjust their molds. But Keller's been doing an excellent job with it, and it really remains true to the original recipe of the shell. So Jasper is the name of a company, right? Yeah, Jasper was the name of a company. It's not a wood. Right, right. Jasper was it was a furniture company. Furniture company. Okay. In, uh, in Indiana. Mm-hmm. And uh, they made furniture, and then they, behind the factory they had like a small building where they built drum shells. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. So, I mean, the majority of their business was not oh. drum shells. It okay. was furniture. Okay. Nah, sekarang kita udah mau masuk ke step by step pembuatan drumnya. Nah, buat kalian yang lebih suka pakai subtitle jadi lebih ngerti, langsung aja nyalain subtitle-nya. And for our English viewers, don't forget to turn on the subtitles as it's gonna be in two different languages. First step of our process is cut the shell to the proper length. We'll do that on this saw, which uh, this saw came from Baldwin, so this is probably from the 70s. And it's real simple, just a couple rollers, we adjust it to the proper depth, cut the shell. After that we sand the inside of the shell, we do that over here on this balloon sand. And the way that process works, you take the shell, put it on the roller, Nah setelah proses pertama selesai yaitu pemotongan shell sesuai dengan ukuran yang diinginkan Lalu di tahap selanjutnya ada penghalusan shell dengan cara di amplas. Setelah bagian luarnya di amplas, nah sekarang kalian bisa lihat bagian dalamnya juga di amplas dengan menggunakan semacam alat khusus Untuk mengamplas bagian dalamnya dengan alat yang berbentuk balon ini Nah alat-alat yang digunakan juga udah lumayan tua tapi masih berfungsi dengan baik Design these machines so that the operator would have control on how much downward pressure was on the shell and also the rate that it goes across the shell. Because you know wood is an imperfect surface to work with, so pretty much every drum shell can be different. Right? Nah, untuk proses kali ini masih sama yaitu pengamplasan bagian luar dari shellnya tapi dengan menggunakan grit yang lebih tinggi untuk menciptakan hasil yang lebih halus. Nah, alatnya ini juga alat yang spesial cuma alat ini udah lumayan lama juga umurnya karena Gretsch memang mempertahankan kejadulannya bisa dibilang karena 
memang mereka memutuskan untuk tidak membuat drum secara modern dengan apa ya mempertahankan nilai-nilai dari great drum itu sendiri. Nah, bisa dilihat juga di sini Paul Cooper menggunakan uh, apa namanya amplas manual juga selain yang otomatis tadi yang besar, nah ini juga yang kecil. Itu membuktikan bahwa memang sebenarnya kata handmade itu sangat diaplikasikan sekali di drum grads ini karena memang banyak yang bilang oh drum kami handmade tapi menggunakan mesin ya kalau di grads ini handmade nya mesinnya mesin tradisional bukan berarti apa ya bukan berarti sangat-sangat modern seperti drum yang lainnya cuma kalau di grads ini memang sepertinya proses-proses yang semi otomatis itu lebih umum ditemukan di pabrik drum grades ini makanya pada saat gua melihat proses ini pun gua kaget gitu gimana dengan proses yang sedemikian rupa dan pabriknya itu tidak besar-besar banget tapi mereka bisa kirim drum ke seluruh dunia dan memenuhi demand dari drummer-drummer di seluruh dunia yang pengen punya drum Amerika yang keren banget yaitu Great Drums. So this has been sanded with 100 grit and then 150. The next step of the process is put it on this machine over here and we'll sand it to uh, 180 grit by hand. This is an interesting machine because uh, it actually came from the Slingerland Niles factory. From what? The Slingerland? Slingerland. Yeah. yeah, so this, this routine came from Slingerland. Uh -huh. Mr. Gretsch bought Slingerland in, I think, 1985. So uh, believe me, I'm very intimate with this machine. Nah kalian tadi dengarkan apa yang Paul Cooper bilang Memang audionya agak kurang dapat ya Karena anginnya tuh kencang banget di dalam pabrik ini Kami mohon maaf Tapi yang bisa gue jelasin adalah Paul Cooper bilang bahwa mesin-mesin ini itu Udah ada dari tahun 50-an Tapi ada beberapa mesin yang spesial buat dia sendiri Yaitu mesin ini yang kalian bisa lihat sekarang itu adalah mesin yang diambil dari pabrik drum Slingerland kalau nggak salah tadi katanya Mr. Gretsch nya itu sendiri membeli Slingerland tahun 85 ya jadi udah lumayan tua juga ini mesin ini cuma dia bilang dia sangat intim sekali dengan mesin-mesin yang ada di situ karena memang dia juga yang membetulin kalau misalnya ada yang rusak dan dia juga yang merawat mesin-mesin ini jadi sangat intim sekali hubungan Paul Cooper ya. machine shop come and get that Slingerland machine and they reverse engineered it and built me another machine just like it. So I have a modern day version of that same machine. And then I bought another big uh, cutter table like this because I used to have the 
guys doing the edges would come into the wood shop to cut the edges, and they would use this machine and that machine, and we'd have uh, be competing for machine time. Mm -hmm. So in order to keep the flow going, we ended up getting duplicating both these machines. So once we're done sanding here, typically we'll go back. The drum goes back to the sprayer, and that's a brand new machine we had. I got that machine last week. Is it from China? I saw some. Pardon me? Is it from a different country, that machine? I thought I saw some like Chinese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, no, that machine was manufactured in Taiwan. Oh, okay. By, by a, a company called VLT. They make a bunch of drum equipment, drum building equipment. Mm -hmm. but a lot of people use So. We bring the drums back here and we stain them. Our, our staining process is pretty old school. We'll put the drum on the, on the arm, we just wipe the stain on, wipe it off, let it dry for 30, 40 minutes, come back and do another coat, let it dry for 30, 40 minutes, come back and do another coat, and we keep doing that until we get to the right color. And you know, working with wood, it's kind of interesting, you know, this drum might take three coats to get to the color. This guy might take four or five. So we, we match them to our color samples up here. Mm -hmm. So in any any given rack of drums, you could put varying amounts of the, on the stain on the drums so that they match. Mm -hmm. Right? If, if you just put three coats on all of them, mm -hmm. they probably wouldn't match. So uh, my, my staining people have to have a keen eye for color. Mm -hmm. Once once we're done staining we'll spray a coat of sealer on the drum. And what that does, it uh, protects the stain from the lacquer. And uh, we use nitrocellulose lacquer, which uh, is the only thing Gretsch has ever used. And uh, nitro is kind of a funny animal. Uh, it's clear water wet. Uh, I put this system in about 15 years ago. And what happens is the lacquer comes out of the bucket, goes up into the pump, goes into a heater, gets heated to 130 degrees, then it comes out here, and goes into the gun, then it runs back into the pot. So all day long that lacquer is circulating. By heating the lacquer to 130 degrees, we don't have to put any thinners in it or additives. Which years ago we used to have used to have to check the viscosity of the lacquer every day. It was a real old school process. But we've been using this for about the last 15 years, probably, and uh, really helped us out because we're just spraying pure nitro. You get a better coat on the drums. There's uh, less solvents in there. The dry times a little quicker. But it works really well. So uh, a typical gloss drum set, mm -hmm. right? Would get get anywhere from uh, <coughs> uh, that typical gloss drum set will get anywhere from six to seven to eight coats of lacquer on it. it just depends on what's going on with the lacquer and the veneer uh, our process will spray a coat we'll let it dry overnight and we'll spray a second coat let it dry overnight and then we scuff sand and we repeat that until it's ready so uh, our scuff sanding, we'll do back here. Hey, what's up? Hey. Just so you know, it's break time. Oh. I mean, I should be smoking a cigarette, right? <laughs> nah, di tahap ini masih sama, masih di proses pengamplasan atau sanding, cuma di grade yang lebih tinggi. Tapi itu tergantung dari si shell drumnya itu mau di finish seperti apa. Starts looking like this, right? You got to start a new sheet. So, uh, the minute you get a buildup of material on the paper, it's time to switch the paper. So, in the course of a day, we go through a ton of sandpaper here. Yeah. And uh, typically, a, a rack like this might take an hour, hour and a half to do, depending upon who's doing it. And uh, so, normally, in the course of a day, we'll scuff sand 20 or 25 racks. This is a zebra. This is a, a limited edition drum we're doing. Mm -hmm. It's uh, red gum on the outside. Red so, gum. It, so 
So it's a USA custom shell, mm -hmm. and we just made the outer flag red gum mm -hmm. instead of maple. And we looks amazing. Yeah, we're building 50, 50 of these kits. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't show you the silver process, okay. but I can show you some silver. Okay. Nah, untuk tahap ini yaitu pemasangan silver sealer, sebuah formula rahasia dari Gretsch yang sudah lama banget dipertahankan, tapi kami mohon maaf nggak bisa menampilkan karena memang ini sifatnya rahasia perusahaan seperti kata Paul Cooper. Namun memang tidak bisa dipakai formulanya oleh brand-brand lain bahkan menurut Paul Cooper pun Seri Renown yang mempunyai silver sealer itu bahan dari silver sealernya itu berbeda dengan seri yang dibuat di Amerika Serikat. Once we're done in the spray room, we bring them out here on these shelves and we let them sit here for anywhere depending upon the weather and the humidity, anywhere from a week to three weeks to just let the lacquer cure. So you'll see drums out here and they almost look like they're done, but they've got a long ways to go. Right. So Max, I gotta buy one get one free. So just one those <laughs> right. so this would be a drum that hasn't been wet sanded yet, and if you look at it, it looks pretty good. But you can kind of see a texture in the lacquer if you look at it right in the light. See what I'm saying? There's like a texture in the lacquer. Yeah. So what we do to it is we'll, we'll wet sand it, right? The first thing we do is we'll take wax and put it on the edge to seal the edge to keep the water from getting in the flies. First we'll sand it with 500 grit paper and we use a special mixture of soap and water, right? So we'll, we'll spray the water, the soapy water on the Sand, just like we stand in the back, you'll sand a little panel at a time. We'll do that with 500 grit, then we'll go to 1,000 grit. And uh, you can tell the difference, you feel how smooth this guy is. Ooh. Right? It's really smooth. Yeah. So that, the, the better the wet sanding job is, mm -hmm. the easier they are to buff. And that's really important, especially if you're buffing like a 18 by 24 inch bass drum. I know. You want to be able to get through it pretty quickly. But it is kind of crazy how smooth they get. I know. You know, and, and the, I, the idea too of, with the lacquer process is, you know, we put two co a coat on, let it dry, a coat on, let it dry, then we sand it. So you're slowly building the nitro on the shell. Mm -hmm. And because you're sanding all the time, you want that cylinder to be perfectly smooth and round. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's kind of ironic because you're putting it on and you're taking it off. You're putting it on and you're taking it off. Uh, but that's the process. That's yeah. how, you know, you can't rush that. Mm -hmm. There's no shortcuts in nitrocellulose lacquer. Nah, sekarang kita masuk ke proses drilling. Nah, di sini gua kaget banget karena proses drillingnya ternyata nggak pakai mesin kayak mesin CNC kayak brand-brand lain di sini benar-benar ketelitian si orangnya itu diperhitungkan banget ya karena mereka harus bisa membuat lubang yang sangat presisi wow machine here, this was the uh, only drilling machine Gretsch had from the mid-50s up until 2012. So this machine drilled Art Blakey's drums, Alvin Jones, Max Roach, Tony Williams, everybody's drums. Your drums, my drums. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's a great old machine. We don't use it much anymore uh, just because the setup time to change sizes takes, it takes a while. In, in 2012, when we did the Brooklyn series and we got very busy, I couldn't keep up with production with this one machine. So I got with a company out in uh, California and we designed these drilling machines. And what we do, this guy does bass drums, yep. this does pan drums, this guy does small toms, and that does floor toms. And uh, they're really fairly simple mechanical machines. Uh, I kind of wanted to keep it that way 
just to stay true to our process. Yeah. They, were, they were loosely based, the design of them loosely based on the old machine. Mm -hmm. Nah, di proses selanjutnya ini ada salah satu karyawan dari Great Strums yang sedang melubangi shellnya untuk nantinya dipasang jadi lux dan lain-lain. Nah, kalau kita lihat di sini alatnya sangat sederhana sekali ya, sebenarnya berbeda sama brand-brand lain yang pakai mesin CNC untuk membuat lubang di shellnya menjadi lebih presisi, tapi kalau di Great sini enggak tapi bukan berarti lubangnya nggak rapi karena selama ini kita lihat untuk seri Amerika lubangnya sangat rapi ya. heran gue juga. <laughs> we use these machines to mark the holes, then we go over to the drill press and drill them manually. Okay, makes sense. All the butt plates, and throw offs, and, and hardware that goes on them, we drill all that manually using jigs that have been around forever, right? This is the jig for the lightning throw off, right? It's probably been here 20 years. And uh, some of the vintage options like uh, comb to comb, mm -hmm. right? These jigs, I was, I was told that these came from the Brooklyn factory. Mm -hmm. So these are super old jigs. And uh, I think they even went through a fire when, uh, in Arkansas when Baldwin. Anyways, I'm gonna put a, a, a batch hole on here and then drill the uh, edges for you. Nah, sekarang Paul Cooper lagi coba lubangin shellnya untuk bat lightnya, throw off ya, dan lain-lain. Dan satu hal yang menarik di sini menurut gua adalah Paul Cooper ini ternyata menggunakan alat yang manual ya bukan seperti mesin CNC brand-brand lain gitu jadi kan kalau mesin CNC pasti presisi banget gitu ya tapi kalau Gretz ini tidak menggunakan mesin CNC gitu bukan berarti tidak presisi cuma memang mereka apa ya membuat drum itu dengan handmade gitu bener-bener semuanya ketelitian si pembuat drum dan ini menurut gua sih luar biasa sih ya karena kalau dibandingin brand lain Ya, Gretz ini bisa dibilang dalam tanda kutip tradisional gitu. Nah, di proses ini Paul Cooper lagi bikin bearing edge-nya supaya sudut kemiringannya sesuai dengan yang diinginkan ya. Karena kalau di Gretz itu setahu gua mereka biasa menggunakan 30 derajat ya bearing edge-nya dan kadang ada yang round over juga. Nah, perbedaan angle dari bearing edge ini sangat penting sebenarnya karena uh, kontak dari drum head terhadap shell kayu itu menjadi suatu yang krusial banget gitu jadi semakin banyak kontak yang dilakukan oleh head dan shellnya maka soundnya akan semakin warm nah wajar kalau misalnya Gretz menggunakan 30 derajat karena sound drum dari Gretz itu sangat warm menurut gua dan Semuanya memang sudah direncanakan oleh Gretsch Formula-formula tersebut dari mulai bearing edge, silver sealer, dan lain-lain segala macem Yang akhirnya semua itu membentuk menjadi sound Gretsch yang terkenal itu Nah dari proses-proses tersebut kita bisa lihat bahwa memang Gretsch ini sangat sabar gitu ya dalam membuat drama jadi mereka tidak memburu-burukan proses kadang ada beberapa proses yang memang dilakukan berkali-kali biarpun memang itu harus jadi apa ya sebab bumerang mungkin ya untuk uh, masalah waktu tapi memang Paul Cooper ini selalu berpikir bahwa Memang semuanya itu membutuhkan waktu untuk membuat sebuah drum yang bagus dan memang benar-benar sesuai keinginan dari Gretsch itu membuatnya itu nggak sembarangan dan membutuhkan waktu yang lumayan lama gitu makanya kalau kata Paul Cooper ini kira-kira um, 4 sampai 6 minggu itu baru bisa membuat satu set drum bukan berarti ya dalam 4 sampai 6 minggu itu cuma satu cuma diperlukan waktu 4 sampai 6 minggu 
untuk membuat satu set drum. Jadi memang bisa terlihat di sini gitu bahwa drum grads buatan Amerika ini memang menurut gue setengah handmade, setengah mesin sih ya. Maksudnya memang benar-benar dari prosesnya memang menggunakan mesin. Tapi di sini tetap dibutuhkan tangan manusia dan ketelitian manusia untuk bisa mencapai produk yang memang diinginkan gitu oleh si pihak Grace. Jadi ini luar biasa banget pengalaman yang sangat berharga buat gua buat bisa ngelihat semua dengan mata kepala gua sendiri. Kalau misalnya boleh gua bilang tur pabrik Grace ini berbeda sama pabrik DW yang memang DW itu sangat 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 modern, sangat sangat presisi karena menggunakan komputer dan lain-lain segala macam. Tapi kalau Grace ini enggak <laughs> Grade sini memang benar-benar bisa dibilang setengah tradisional, setengah modern ya bisa dibilang setengah handmade, setengah mesin. Ya, memang nggak semuanya menggunakan mesin, tapi menurut gua justru itu value-nya Grade. Jadi memang banyak orang memang suka, wah oh, gua lebih suka produk handmade daripada produk yang pakai mesin karena lebih pakai cinta misalnya begini. <laughs> ya mungkin Grade ini juga jawabannya. Jadi memang buat kalian yang pada suka sound-sound vintage pasti memang nggak akan kemana-mana sih pasti ke Gretsch Drums karena memang ya itulah that great Gretsch sound buat gue itu slogan yang bukan main-main karena memang ini karakternya Gretsch dan yang nggak akan pernah bisa dipakai di drum lain karakternya Sometimes, especially during the summer, it's so humid in this building mm-hmm. that we're having issues with the glue getting tacky, mm-hmm. right? So the, the process is fairly simple. First, we cut the sheets to size on the cutter, and we lay them out on the tables, and we'll take a, a, a paint roller and roll the glue on the shell or on the on the material. Then we roll the glue on the shell over here. We let the, the sheets and the shell dry for anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes when it's nice and tacky. Then we put them in this press. All right, so the, the drum will go in here. This gets pulled up. And as the, the first contact of that material with the, with the shell, it has an even 25 pounds of pressure and it's rolled on, uh, which eliminates any kind of bubbles. Back in the day, we had a different old press that you actually had to hold the lever down to, for the pressure and we, we had a lot of issues with wrap back in back in that day but, but this machine has been doing a great job a real improvement to our process but we offer probably 65 colors of, of wrap and uh, recently we expanded in here I used to have all the material in here but I added some more tables so we could boost production a little bit So when the drums wrap, there's a half an inch of material on either side of it, the, you know, extra, extra right? Mm-hmm. So what we'll do is after we finish the seam, which we, we glue the seam and, and uh, manually and, and put it back in the press and roll it again, we'll take this into the wood shop and we'll trim this back, even with the shell, oh, right? Okay. Then we send the shells back to the spray room to have silver lacquer put in them. Mm-hmm. And after that, they're brought back out here, and then we send them to drilling, and then they get it, or they get drilled and then edged, 
and then put together. So once we've got the drums badged and ready to be put together, we bring them out here, the barber to put lugs on them. don't feel the same as the old guy. <laughs> this is a baby to compare yeah. that. I've had that thing rebuilt about three different times. Oh, yeah. States domestically, it goes on this line, and if it's going overseas, it goes on a pallet, and we stage it until the container arrives. Where do you send most of the drums? Or the biggest demand? Uh, Europe is probably one of the bigger markets for us right now. Okay. Europe, the USA, likewise, uh, we've had uh, sending drums to China now, uh, 
South America is starting to come alive a little bit. Australia is doing very well. We have a new distributor in Japan who hopefully we'll do a ton of business with. So our, our overseas business is very strong. Grets. What? A distributor in Indonesia for Grets. Um, I, I don't see. Isn't it? Uh, is there uh, Tiga Negira? Tiga Negira. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We've got drums over there. But we're gonna work. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we should. We should go get a shot of them. Yeah. Yeah. Tammy. Hey, Tammy. You got yeah. some Tiga Negira over there? I do. Yeah, really? cool. We want to get a shot of that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, gave us uh, Europe. Yeah. And you know, Europe's always been a good market for us. Yeah. Over the years we've had, let's see, at one point Arbiter was our distributor. Mm -hmm. We had Music Meyer was our distributor. Mm -hmm. Then we had uh, Fender was our distributor. Mm -hmm. And now Gava. And it's almost like at the business. Yeah, yeah, I think they're, they're doing an excellent really job. Good. And they, they've got good marketing, good salespeople. Yeah, yeah we got more to go too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you gotta take that on the plane with you, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Do you know the uh, the people at Tigger? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm gonna start to work with them together to promote restaurants. Uh, oh, that's why yeah, yeah. I'm making this video yeah, yeah, for yeah. educational matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Now, did we say that right? Tegan and Nagari? Um, What's the proper pronunciation for that? Tegan Nagri, yeah. Nagri? Yeah, Tegan Nagri. And that? Raya? Mm, I don't know if it's, this is the name, but they might have this kind of name. Right. Yeah, but, but over there you'd see. Yeah, to get Negri. Yeah. Just like now, just so Tammy and I can say it right. Mm -hmm. Negri? Negri. Negri. You got you got to roll that tongue a little bit. <laughs> Negri, right? Negri. Negri. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's all okay. <coughs> Tammy takes care of all the shipping. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as our international business continues to grow, that's funny. Which one do you like better from the three drums? That's a hard one to say. I love the Brooklyn drums, and I love the broadcaster okay, drums. <laughs> I have all three. Okay. <laughs> but I probably play my USA custom more than mm -hmm. anything, and that's more out of habit. Terima kasih buat kalian yang udah nonton video ini. Jadi dari video ini kalian bisa belajar banyak ya bahwa Gretz drums itu menggunakan alat-alat yang tidak modern seperti brand drum yang lainnya dan luar biasanya adalah dengan 21 pegawai mereka bisa mengirim drum berkualitas tinggi ke seluruh dunia wah itu luar biasa sih menurut gua jadi mulai sekarang kalian bisa lebih mengapresiasi great drum sebagai pertama bagian dari sejarah perkusinya Amerika Serikat dan juga mereka masih mempertahankan cara membuat drumnya yang seperti dulu dan itu hebat banget jadi seperti Art Blakey, Vinicola Yuta, Cindy Blackman, Jergo Borlai, dan banyak drummer-drummer hebat lainnya itu mengapresiasi drum grass ini ya memang gak heran sih, wajar banget menurut gua jadi terima kasih yang udah nonton video ini, jangan lupa tonton terus bahasa drum like, share, dan subscribe juga oh iya, jangan lupa buat follow instagramnya bahasa drum di at bahasa drum oke, sampai ketemu di video selanjutnya, thank you